What's going on, Washington fans? Welcome to Bleacher Report. I am Josh Taylor, and on this stream, I got to pick the topic that I wanted to talk about. So I went over to X and I asked y'all what you wanted me to talk about today and what you really were kind of interested in hearing more about as the offseason progresses. We have franchise tags going on right now. Then, of course, we have free agency starting up beginning of next week. And then we have the draft at the end of April. So I wanted to get a good idea of what y'all wanted me to talk about. And it seems like a lot of people wanted to talk about possible trade scenarios for Washington. I heard stuff about players. I heard stuff about, you know, a player that we have on the team, maybe Justin Fields. Um, also some trades during the draft. So I decided to just kind of put all of them together and go over four different scenarios that I've come, you know, just thinking about and things I've been hearing and reading and what could be likely things to happen, things that I'm for, things that I'm against, but still have a possibility of happening. So I got four trade scenarios together for y'all uh, that I really want to talk about. And I'm going to start for before the draft. So I have two that could happen before the draft. I mean, one could technically happen during the draft, I guess. But then the other two are centered around the draft and draft picks and draft capital and stuff like that. So let's start right here. I'm going to go with one. It kind of happened yesterday with a certain player getting franchise tagged. And it seems like a lot of people, you know, out there in the media world think that this player is one of the top candidates for a tag and trade um, scenario. And that is the best corner in the league last year. That was Legereus Sneed. So could Washington trade for Legereus Sneed? And once again, it seems like yesterday everyone was saying a second round pick gets this done. So, of course, Washington has two second round picks. And I know what you're thinking, like, oh, my gosh, Josh, like, it's a second round pick. Are we really going to trade for a player and pay him um, with, you know, a, a high pick as a, as a second? And there's a couple different ways to look at this. One, the second round pick that you got from Montez Sweat. Um, ideally, you would have had to have paid Montez Sweat, but instead you got a second round pick for him and you can choose to pay a premier corner in the league. Like I said, I, in my opinion, I, a lot of people's opinions, this is the top corner in the league last year. He only allowed one touchdown uh, all season. And it was an insane grab by Khalil Shakir for the, the Bills that like that comeback route, right? Kept his foot in, in, in the end zone. I have no idea how he caught it. Sneed played it perfectly. Like nonetheless, Sneed had a flawless season. Flawless. Um, and of course, that defense under Spag was just amazing. Um, highlighted by Snead, but they also have McDuffie too, Trent McDuffie. Um, another younger corner, really starting to play up to his potential. So they they can move Snead for a second round pick. They can add some more stuff. They have some depth at corner. They can draft another one in the second if they you know choose not to just play Snead on the franchise tag. But then also if you think about it this way too, I talked yesterday about projections for free agency. And I really do think that Washington decides to re-sign Kendall Fuller to like a three-year deal, kind of end things out for him here. Uh, I said, you know, I think he's been one of the more underrated pieces on this team, especially the defense, as bad as it's been the last few years. But then also like just the coaching staff and everything. Kendall Fuller has really just lived up, you know, and, and beyond what the rest of the defense has over the last few years, honestly. He's the only guy really getting turnovers and stuff like that. Quan Martin seems like a guy who's going to be getting some turnovers and stuff, especially under Quinn. Um, but I, I think, you know, if you do end up losing Kendall Fuller in free agency, though, what what are you what are you going to do? You have to draft another corner. You know, you got Forbes in the first round. You pretty much you have to start him because he was a, you know, top one of the top picks. So you have to start Forbes. You just have too much draft capital in there. Then you have St. Juice. Like I said, you have Quan Martin who could play corner, um, but there's just not much behind them. Like your corner room is in such a liability if you end up losing Kendall Fuller. Of course, Fuller says, look, man, I'm good. Sorry, Quinn. Sorry, Adam Peters. I'm going to test free agency. You know, maybe go back to safety, maybe go back to nickel corner, whatever, or go play for somebody else who doesn't want to, you know, maybe he wants to go get another ring. I don't know. Maybe he goes to the Chiefs. <laughs> who knows? Goes back to Kansas City. We're just playing a revolving door with Kendall Fuller. Um, but it's just if he decides to leave and you can't re-sign him, then what are you going to do? Once again, you have to draft somebody then. And it's got to be somebody in the second round. 
So I would much rather use that second round pick. Legarius Snead is only 27 years old. I think he's still 27 when the season starts. It's a 27 year old Snead playing the best right now in his career. Like this is his prime right now. Like this is it. Sign him when his prime's getting started. Like last year was like his the best year of his career. Sign him. Trade that second form instead of having to draft another corner. So then you have Forbes, who's still learning the position, obviously. Well, not just the position, but tra- the transition to the NFL. Then you're going to have another rookie corner opposite. You know, uh, I mean, you can still call Forbes a rookie, honestly. He just didn't play as much. He didn't get all the reps. It's not like he started all season. You know, he got benched for a while. Like, it's like a redshirt season <laughs> in the NFL for Forbes, essentially. So you're going to have another rookie opposite of Forbes um, who's hopefully going to start the whole season. And I just I don't like that. I, I don't like the idea of that's what our corner room is going to look like. I don't trust St. Juice at times. I think he's physical. I think he's really good sometimes. But then there's other times where he's way too grabby. He's way too you know physical. Um, and then there's other times where he's just out of position. So – I want to see what this team can look like with, you know, better coaching, obviously better defensive scheme with Dan Quinn going from Ron Rivera and Jack Del Rio to, to Dan Quinn and Joe White Jr. is just night and day. It's, it's completely turning of the page for the defense. Um, so I think the team and all will get better, but you still cannot go into the season with a, you know, giant glaring need at one of the most important positions in NFL. Like outside of the quarterback position, I'm putting corner there. And we saw that so many times last year with explosive plays, big time touchdowns, just to, to getting out of the game before the game even started, like not even having a chance to compete in a game because these big plays, you know, given up so early. So if you lose Fuller, this is something you have to do. You have to trade a second for Cena. If if a second gets it done, I don't care which second it is, get it done. Get him here. Pay him whatever it is. We have the most money in the NFL. You know, that first year, I I mean, I would sign him to like a three-year deal anyways. That first year is going to be favorable. Whatever it looks like, like whatever you think um, he could even get paid, It's going to be favorable that first year to where you can afford it. And then, of course, the salary cap goes up every single year anyways. So PFF has a projected at a three-year, 52.5 million total, averages to about 17.5 million per year. So in my opinion, I think that first year would probably be something like a 12 mil, maybe 13, 14 mil at the most um, hit. But you still have plenty of money in free agency. Yes, you lose one of your seconds, but I'm telling you guys, it's worth it. Um, if it saves you from having to fill that hole in the draft and then just hope that that, that rookie can come in. And it is a good corner draft. I, I, I've said this many times. I said it on X the other day. I I think this, this corner class is super underrated, but it's just the situation of do you really want to put a, a rookie corner on on this team a rookie corner would be great for uh, a team that has a sneed or a team that keeps a, a kindle fuller um but if you lose kindle fuller and you don't get sneed you can't afford to just roll out another rookie so that's my argument for that um is it worth it in my opinion yeah i, I think it would be but it does it also you know suck losing that second round pick absolutely but at the same time you're essentially trading montez sweat for the jerry sneed like, in my opinion, that sounds great. Because you'd have to pay them both regardless. And Snead, in my end, it would actually make less than what Sweat um, got paid for the Bears. So, in my opinion, that's a fair deal. Um, secondly, let's talk about getting a second-round pick. Now, this is something that's been talked about a little bit. Um, it was talked about, um, I'd say, not too long ago. But then it's kind of heated back up a little bit. And the thing that really... Um, got my attention is there was a certain, um, I'll say website, but a certain user on X that really, I'm going to pull it up right now just to read exactly what he said. Um, so when we started doing the cuts with Leno, we started doing the cuts with Logan Thomas and Nick Gates. Um, spot track said a name to keep an eye on and trade discussions this March could be commander's defensive tackle, Jonathan Allen, who's entering year four of five of an 82.5 million contract 
in Washington. So that's my next one. Could we trade John Allen for a second? And I remember I did a trade scenario video like early, like right when the season ended, different things. Um, and just different scenarios like with, with the trade deadline and stuff going on. And like maybe Allen could be a name. And it seems like it's kind of re- resurfaced just a little bit. So he said, you know, the 29-year-old carries a 15.5 million salary, um, zero dollars guaranteed in 2024. Um, if Chris Jones stays in Kansas City, Kansas City, Kansas City, Allen could be on the move as a top, you know, um, target for a free agency. I mean, uh, for for trades. But I, I think something to think about too is Christian Wilkins is now on on the block for free agency. He's not going back to Miami. It sounds like. Um, so maybe that goes down just a little bit, but at the same time, I mean, I, I think the consensus is John Allen is regarded to a high standard around the league. I know some fans, you know, dog on John Allen. John Allen's one of my favorite players, like if not my favorite player of the team. You know, watched him growing up in Virginia. You know, as an Alabama fan, watching his, uh, you know, watching him in high school, and then watching him commit to Alabama, watching his whole, you know, Bama career, and then I just remember us drafting him. I'm like, yo, I'm ecstatic. This is like, this is my guy. Um, you know, I've had the chance to sit down and talk to to John Allen a couple times. I've had him on the show before. Um, just a super cool guy. Like, I, I love John Allen, and you know, his comments that he made, like, I don't blame him at all. Like, we were all ready to, you know, just give up with the coaching staff, with how the season and everything was going. But I think it's a different vibe right now. I think he would love to stay here and play for Dan Quinn and play for Joe Witt and just see what we can build, um, you know, for the season coming up in the next few, in the next few years, you know, I think we could resign him and he could kind of pretty much end his career here, like in his thirties, whatever he decides to do. Um, but it's still something that is a possibility. Am I against it? Absolutely. I, I would hate to, you know, take John Allen out and still have a just you know another glaring hole on the defense um, for us. And it, like you get a second, we already have two seconds. So if, you know, if we don't trade for Snead, whatever. Um, like I don't know. Like I, I just I don't think it's worth it. Like you, you get a second out of it, then you got to draft his replacement. The Darian Mathis is a guy that hasn't been healthy. Um, Jaron Payne is not going anywhere, in my opinion. Um, and let's see, what we got here in the chat. Uh, DC Teams uh, eight says, "How about Payne for Sneed straight up?" Um, I don't know. I, I just, in my opinion. I don't think Payne goes anywhere. I think, I think Chris Jones stays in Kansas City first off. Um, so I think Kansas City really just wants a second round pick for him, like, especially a high second round pick that gets done easily. Um, I just I wouldn't be okay trading Payne for Snead. I'd rather trade the second because then once again you're having to draft their replacements. So if you trade John Allen, you got to draft his replacement. The D, D tackle group's pretty good. You got Durzon Newton. Um, you got Leonard um, out of Miami. You've got a couple. You got a couple good guys in the, in the interior D line this draft. But like, what does that look like? Like, I'd rather get someone depth wise, maybe later on in the draft, maybe like a Michael Hall or something like that. Um, just because I just the depth really isn't there. Um, like I said, if Darian Mathis can stay healthy. Um, Ridgeway has been really good for us. Shout out to the Cowboys for letting us steal him away. He's been solid for us. But if you get rid of Allen, you're kind of just left on an island of like, okay, now we have another hole in this defensive line once again. You got to fill the two edge spots with some like good starters, which I've talked about to a good extent. But then now you've gotten rid of Allen and now you have to fill it again. And it's got to be somebody that's a leader because, you know, you see that C on his chest. He's a leader. Team captain every year. He does make big plays, whether you you know you watch the, the stat sheet or not. John Allen makes plays. Um, it might not always be the, the sack seasons like he had that one year when he um when he was getting paid, but it shows up on tape like how good he is stopping the run, getting to the quarterback, you know, disrupt like disrupting the plays, creating opportunities for other guys in the defensive line. Um, so it is a possibility. Like I said, Spot Track brought it up the other day once again, saying like now would be a good time to do it if they do because of his contract. 
But in my opinion, I just don't think Dan Quinn wants to lose that kind of guy. You know, talent wise, but then also just leader on the, on the defense. Like you're you're taking that away. Um, and I just I don't know. I just I don't feel good about that. <laughs> and maybe it's because I'm biased. Like I said, I'm a huge jo uh, John Allen fan. Love John Allen. Um, so now let's go look at a couple other things. Uh, DC teams, he says, once again, uh, that's fair. Just looking at being able to allocate those funds to an edge or a linebacker. Absolutely. Like I, I agree when it comes to money. Um, but Washington, we have plenty of money. That's another thing too. Like the first year of these contracts is going to allow Washington to really spend some money in free agency. Now, does it mean like they could sign? We saw Brian Burns just got tagged not long ago. Um, from what I've heard, Josh Allen's going to be getting tagged um, today pretty soon, um, by the way, as well. Then you have the only, like, big, expensive – I'll call them expensive – edge rushers that you could have um, in free agency that are going to be available. Now, Brian Burns is another one of these trade uh, tag-and-trade candidates. It sounds like he could be on the move. Like, maybe a second gets it done, and you could pay – Brian Burns, whatever that looks like, 25, 26 mil a year. Um, some said he wants close to 30. We'll see. Um, but like if you're not doing the tag and trade on the edge, Daniil Hunter, um, looking for a three year, 65 mil contract. Bryce Huff, three year, 50 mil, not too bad. Um, Jonathan Grenard, he's pretty favorable, three year, 48 mil. So it's not bad. Like you have some options to spend in free agency. Like I said in my stream yesterday, I think that they go the route of Dorns Armstrong, uh, Cowboys player, super effective in Dan Quinn's defense. Um, one of these young ascending players really looking for more opportunities, more responsibility, looking to go to a team and start and just like he's getting to like he's right at the peak, like ready to just break through. That's what I want in free agency. Like Daniil Hunter, super pro productive, like every single year. He's about to be 30. Um do I want to give him a three-year contract? Probably not. But once again, like he hasn't slowed down any. But like our luck, he's going to slow down this year. Um, but then same Bryce Huff, only 25, kind of ascending. I'd be fine with it. Is he a, like a three-down player? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but Brian Burns, only 25. Like if we decided to trade a second for him and pay him, I'm fine with that too. I love Brian Burns. I feel bad for the guy. Like, you know, the video where the guy's like, we're going to get you out of there. It's like the little puppy in the window. That's how I felt for Brian Burns the last few years. Um, let's see. Uh, the boy Chachi says Bryce up. I like Bryce up. So like, I'm, I'm fine signing. I mean, uh, yeah, signing Bryce up, throwing some money his way. Like I said, can he be a three down guy? I don't know. Uh, let's take a look at another scenario. So these are two that could happen like before the draft that could change the draft capital. Uh, but here's two. One I love, one I don't love at all, but it's still a possibility, so I can't hate it. And it is trading back from number two. There's a lot of people, like I said, when I asked you all what you wanted me to talk about, a lot of people said, Josh, do some scenarios where we trade back from two. Because it sounds like Washington is open to anything. And I'm glad that's kind of what you want to hear. Um, Washington is willing to participate in um, the NFL draft, <laughs> essentially, is what we're hearing. Um, so let's start with this. After, like I said, and I, I said this before the combine, like, welcome to combine week. This is the week where everybody talks and rumors start speculating, and people come away from the combine with a good idea of the draft. Some are, some are real. And some aren't real. So you kind of have to weed through it. Um, one thing we've heard a lot of is it sounds like Washington is very comfortable staying at two and drafting Drake May. Like it sounds like a lot of people think that's the move. Now there's other people that came away from the combine saying that, you know, Jane Daniels is the number two quarterback in this draft. Dan Orlovsky thinks so. Rich Eisen just said so on his show. Like he, his consensus from the combine is people think Jane Daniels is two. Regardless, a lot of people think Washington is fine staying at two and taking the quarterback that they like most, whether it's Drake May, whether it's Jane Daniels. And I'm going to tell you now, I did not do a scenario trading up to number one because it's not going to happen. The Bears are 1 million percent drafting Caleb Williams. I don't think a package exists 
that can stop them from, from drafting Caleb Williams. And rightfully so. Um, I don't think there is a, a, a package that Adam Peters could put together that he feels good about to, to the Bears where they're like, okay, we'll give you Caleb Williams, like whatever. We'll give you the number one pick. That's something I've gotten out of the combine is it sounds like the Bears are absolutely going with Caleb Williams. So I did not do a trade up to one scenario. But I did a trade back from two because a lot of people, once again, said, Josh, you know, some people, uh, Adam Schefter was on Pat McAfee's show and he said, um, I think it was yesterday, said like, you know, Washington could absolutely sit there at two. Sounds like they're fine with doing that, you know, getting Drake May, getting Jaden Daniels, whoever. But uh, don't count out that they are, they are, you know, possibly open to trading back from two as well. If someone offers them a, a historic haul, or a haul that just really helps the team out this year. Um, and you know how y'all know how I feel about it. Like, in my opinion, do not devalue your quarterback selection because of other picks you can get. Like, in my opinion, nothing matters if you don't have a quarterback. So whether it's Drake May, whether it's Jaden Daniels, like take one of those at two. Pick one, whichever one you like the most. Um, now if it was a draft to where they don't like the quarterback prospects available, they're at two like the Kenny Pickett draft, like there was really nothing there than like trade back. Cool. Um, but in my opinion, it just, I, I just, it, I find it hard to believe that they wouldn't like either Drake may or Jaden Daniels, especially like once again, after the combine, people are super high on Drake may people are super high on Jane Daniels. I just find it hard to believe that Adam Peters, Dan Quinn and company are like, you know, we don't really like any of these. We feel better about that guy on the screen. You see there, JJ McCarthy. We are okay with trading back and getting JJ McCarthy um, with that that new pick we have. So I went into um, the PFF mock draft simulator and decided to just take a look at you know what this could possibly look at. And let me see if I can uh, move myself over here. Boom, just like that, magic. Uh, so I went in here and there's one team that really stood out to me that I'm looking at the most. And it's the Atlanta Falcons, like a team that's that could be super aggressive with trading up. Um, so could the Falcons trade for Fields? Yes. Could they sign Kirk Cousins? Possibly. But if they miss out, this is a team to look for. Um, you see the um, the order here on the, on the left. Patriots might not even be taking a quarterback just because their roster is so bad. That's something that people have said at the Combine, too. The Patriots, like, are not a quarterback away. They are an entire team away. Like they are a complete rebuild mode. So maybe they say, look, we need to, this is a good draft for us to trade back. We don't really think we're going to be that good next year. Anyways, uh, we need to just load up on picks, load up on assets, build this roster with some talent. They have no wide receivers. They have no offensive line really. Cause two of them are free agents. I don't know how much they're going to get back. Hunter Henry is a free agent. Defense is struggling. Christian Baltimore needs to be paid. Like the Patriots have a lot going on. They are not a quarterback away. They are in complete reset mode. Um, so I think that's a good one to look for. Would we trade with the Giants? Absolutely not. So I think Falcons at eight is a sweet spot. I think obviously Vikings at 11 is another one I'll look at with y'all <clears throat> just to see what that could look like. Broncos at 12. They get rid of Russ. They have no money. They need picks. They need to be able to draft a quarterback. They have to get it right. They really don't have that many picks either because of everything they traded away, but we're going to see what they got. But then also Raiders at 13. So 11, 12, 13, quarterback needy teams, but then also the Falcons at eight. So what I'm looking at, though, is like where can Washington go to where if they do like uh, J.J. McCarthy – I don't want to say any other quarterback because I don't like Penix. I don't like Bo Nix, Rattler. Like, I, I guess, like for me, it's those four, and I'm really not even a J.J. McCarthy fan. I'm not at all. I, I just I think he's still super raw. I think he still needs some time. Um, the translation to the NFL might be a little bit rough at first. So you can see it here. Um, uh, actually, I might be able to change this a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Um but the Falcons are at eight. They need a quarterback, too. They might be missing out. There we go. Might be missing out on Kirk. Might be missing out on Justin Fields. So what do they do? They say, look, there's a quarterback we like, whether it's Jaden Daniels, Drake May. We need to move up to two. 
Um, so when I'm doing this draft simulator, like I'm looking at the Falcons, I'm getting pick eight, pick 43, pick 79 in this draft, and a first and second next year. We're moving back six spots. That's a really good haul. You know, like I said, a first and second next year. Falcons might be, you know, it's seven, eight win team next year. That might be a top 10 pick in the first round. Who knows? Um, but you're getting pick eight. You're getting pick 43, which is huge. We'd have pick 36, 40, and 43. And then you'd have 79. So you'd have 67 and 79. I've said for months now, the top, usually it's like the top 40, top 50 of a draft is really good. The top like 75 of this draft is unreal. The top 80, I'll even say top 90 will have some starters in it. Like, it's really good. First three rounds, you're getting some legit talent. I'd say there's elite talent all the way into the second round. And then you get, like I said, a first and second next year. So is it enticing? Sure. You trade back to eight. Um, they get, let's just say, and craziest scenario is um, some people think Jaden Daniels falls to like eight. Some people think that Drake May falls to like eight. I don't think that even exists. So I think if they do go back to eight, it'd be like JJ McCarthy. Then you'd have, like I said, pick eight. You get JJ McCarthy at 36, 40, 43, 67, um, 79, and so on. And you're loaded up with talent. So that's what that could look like with the Falcons. Um, maybe you look at, let me go to the, I think. I think the Vikings is really – some people think that Justin Fields is going to the Vikings. I don't think so. I can see the Vikings being a team that wants to trade up. Do they have enough, though? 42, 109, and a first and second next year. Like, I just need more. Like, I think they'd be willing to do this. Um, But, like, that's just not good enough for me. Like, I just don't like what the Vikings have to offer. I'd much rather have what the what the Falcons did. Of course they're willing to accept that. That's a terrible trade for us. Like we'd probably need a first in 2026 as well, or they better be sending us some kind of player or something. Um, but at this point, I don't like Minnesota's offer, like what they can get for us, unless they are offering another first. Broncos, I don't know either, man. Like once again, we better be getting a 2026 first, but I'm trying to rebuild now. Like, 76 and 114. I need some top 50 picks. I need something in that second round. The, the Falcons, in my opinion, are winning this big time. Now, the Raiders, but at this point, if you go all the way back to 13, and you think, once again, those teams that we just try to trade with, the Vikings and the Broncos, they need a quarterback as well. So, J.J. McCarthy is likely gone. Whoever you even have on your board at quarterback is more than likely not going to be there at 13. So I think that's just too far back, unless you just don't plan on taking a quarterback. But like I said, in my opinion, I am very against this. In my dream world, we stay at two, and Adam Peters picks who he wants. Now, if he says, I, my guy is J.J. McCarthy, then so be it. I will trust him. I've said this since we hired the man. I will trust whatever he decides to do. So in my opinion, if the, a trade back is even in like a possibility – they're not going past eight. Now, would any of these other teams be willing to trade back and let another team move up? I don't know. You want to be the team that passed on Joe Alt, Olufashanu, Marvin Harrison, Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors? Do you want to be that team that missed out on one of those players and traded back a few spots just because someone else wanted a quarterback? Not me. I'm taking the elite talent that's on the board, um, which is what makes it hard for me to even want to trade back. But like I said, even if it's big 74, um, it says there's a 46% chance that happens. I think that pick happens. Falcons need a quarterback. They still have pick 79. They still have 110, 142. They got, they got you know, some draft capital left over this year. Um, even if they said pick 79, like whatever, I do that. Um, but in my opinion, do I want to do that? No. So I'm just going to hit um, offer trade. They'll take it. Boom. Resume draft. I'll zoom in. Don't worry. <clears throat> I did it to where it's slow because um, I want to see who each team picks. So it has the Falcons getting Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, Joe Alt, which honestly I could see all this going except Cooper John, I don't think. I think it'd be Brock Bowers. Um, so then we'd be here at eight, kind of looking. 
And according to this draft, they would have Jane Daniels being here at eight. Like I said, in a perfect world, that would be excellent. If I if I was guaranteed to get Jane Daniels after trading back at eight, I just don't see that happening. Whether it's a team trading up or whether it's just the Patriots taking a quarterback anyways. But perfect world, Washington would trade back and get Jane Daniels at eight and all those other assets. Like, absolutely count me in. But I just don't think that's likely. I think you would have to go here to quarterback and you'd be looking at J.J. McCarthy at eight. And I don't think he's worth a top 10 pick. I'm sorry. I, I A lot of people know, like they come to me. My boy Brandon talks about uh, J.J. McCarthy all the time. Me and him have been talking about him since the season started. I'm not a J.J. McCarthy fan. Now, I will say this. My last scenario I'm going to go over real quick with y'all, and that is trading back up into the first round. So, in my opinion, selecting a quarterback at two, but then trading back up into the first round um, and getting one of these elite offensive um, linemen. This is something I mentioned once again on um, X the other day is what that could look like. The you know perfect scenario of trading to somebody. Um, and for this, um, let me just refresh my mock simulator real quick. Um, what that could look like, possible, you know, could that even be like what the Texans did and go CJ Stroud, Willie Anderson, like two, three, I don't know. Um, I wouldn't be mad at it if they traded up into the top, like eight. I just don't know if there's a team that wants to trade out that spot because of the talent this year. You know, if they were to get a Joe older, Olaf Shani still, that'd be insane. But in my opinion, I just don't see that happening. Um, in my, like I said, my opinion it would have to be in somewhere in like the teens. I think the perfect scenario to look at, and let me pull it back up here real quick, um, is looking at one of the teams that does miss out on um, one of the quarterbacks. So you have, like I said, that sweet spot with those teams that were trying to trade for us. Um, 11, 12, 13, Vikings, Broncos, and Raiders, once again, if the Broncos miss out on their quarterback or if they go one in free agency, they need draft picks. I mean, they need a lot of stuff. Maybe that's a team that trades back. The Raiders, if they don't have anything there at 13 that they like quarterback-wise, maybe they're willing to get some more um, assets for this year and next year as they're kind of rebuilding as well. Um, so let me just hit this real quick and see. Um, like I said, I'm going to take a quarterback at two. And then I'm going to pause the draft. Uh, I'm just going to take Drake May at two. That's pretty much how I'm still drafting. So as it's going through here, I'm going to pause it when it gets to about Vikings. I'm going to let them go. Um, let, me let, let me let the Broncos select. All right, so they took Jaden Daniels. Perfect. That's pretty much what I wanted. So now, like, the quarterback-wise is J.J. McCarthy or nothing for the Raiders. So I'm like, Hey, we want pick 13. Let me zoom back in for y'all. We want pick 13. We took Drake may we're going to give you pick 36. Oh man. They're being stingy. We're going to give you pick 36, a second next year, man. They don't want to get off that spot. Realistically, if it were to happen. All right. So Raiders don't want to do it. You know what? We're going to keep business moving then. We're going to keep we're going to resume the draft. Where can we go next? I'm going to stop it right here in the teens or like the 20s, not the Cowboys. They don't want to trade anything. Um, so Mims goes to the Cowboys. They need offensive line help. Let's look at the Packers. The Packers need a lot of help too. Maybe they're willing to say, hey, we'll we'll move up off of it. Okay, so maybe we can do even 40. Dang, they'll take that. Oh, give up a third next year to move up from 36 to 25. Let's see who's still on the board. Um, let me see this. Let me offer it real quick and see what they do because there's some really good talent on the board still. They don't want to do it. We're going to force it just for this exercise all right so let's see who's still here on the board you got graham barton tyler newbin peyton wilson so like i said for this exercise for this example 
I wanted to move up and get, you know, uh, offensive tackle. Offensive line help is a must. I like Graham Barton a lot, but you're telling me, you know, Tyler Guyton's still there on the board, super athletic right tackle. A uh, lot of upside to him. Fits, you know, Cliff Kingsbury's offense perfectly. A guy who can move out in space. I'm taking that all day long. Um, in a perfect world, someone like Troy Fitanu would be here. Mims, J.C. Latham. Um, they had Olu dropping all the way to 18. They had Troy Fitanu at top 15, which is nuts. Talise Fuaga. Um, so, like I said, there's 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 a chance that maybe one of these guys, maybe Mims, if Mims is there, absolutely. Um, I would love to trade up to the top 20, but at least top 25 to get some offensive line help. I think Tyler Guyton could be there at like 25. I think that's realistic. Um, Mims going top 25 is likely. JC Latham, like I said, all these guys going top 20 um, around this range is super likely as well. Um, wouldn't surprise me, but the corner class, the wide receiver class, and the quarterback class help out a little bit. But once again, we saw how elite this offensive line class is. I am all for trading um, a pick this year and a pick next year, like one of those seconds, and, and whether it's a second or a third next year, depending on how high you trade up, might have to be a first, depending <laughs> like how high you're trying to go. Um, but I'm all for picking your quarterback at two. And then trading back up into the first round as the night goes on, you hear bing, bing, boom, like we got to trade. Washington's trading back up into the first round to get their offensive linemen. I'd be ecstatic. I would love it. Protect your rookie quarterback, and then we'll get some more weapons and so on. So hope you all appreciated the stream. Um, give you insight on some you know trade scenarios with some players before the draft, but then also during the draft, what it could look like. Could Washington trade back from two? It, anything's possible. Do I want that to happen? No. Take your quarterback at two, Adam. Uh, whoever you like, I don't care who it is, just take your quarterback at two. Let's get this over with, and let's get the season going. But then also, I'm all for trading back up into the first round from one of those second-round picks that we have and getting an offensive lineman of the future. Charles Leno is gone. Andrew Wiley should not be starting at right tackle next year. Um, Cornelius Lucas is a free agent. You got to resign him. So appreciate y'all tuning in on the stream. I'm Josh Taylor and I will see y'all again soon. Peace.